And for more insight, I want to bring in retired FBI Special Agent Kenneth Gray. He is now a senior lecturer in criminal justice at the University of New Haven. Kenneth, thank you so much for joining us. Certainly. Can we talk about these substations in Washington State? Vandalized early Sunday morning. What do you make of the timing, not only on a major holiday, but also just weeks after a similar incident in North Carolina? Well, it certainly was timed in such a fashion as to reduce the possibility of being detected. That is, if you go in there on an early, early Sunday morning uh, on Christmas Christmas Day, nobody is going to be there to, to be able to observe what you are doing. So this was a well-timed attack. These attacks impacted multiple stations in Washington. Does that indicate that this was a coordinated effort? Do you think this person or, or people had a larger goal in mind than 14,000 without power? So it's hard to say until you actually do an investigation. There have been previous attacks like this, attacks in uh, North Carolina, attacks in Oregon. And so it could be the act of, a, of an individual that is moving around, or it could be a group of people that are acting in concert with one another. It's not really clear yet, and that's why you need to do an investigation to find out what actually occurred. Certainly, and with the threat of not only vandalism or intentional sabotage, but also those fri frigid temperatures, how vulnerable is our power grid right now? Is enough being done to keep it secure? So most of the substations that you see around the country are usually unmanned, surrounded by a chain link fence uh, with uh, locks on it. But as you've seen from the attacks in North Carolina and now the attack to Washington State, that these uh, attacks occur without any uh, real opposition. Uh, and so uh, our critical infrastructure, especially our power and electrical distribution system centers, they are at risk of being attacked. Uh, it is an attack that can be easily carried out by a few people working either uh, together or in uh, working alone and make uh, major attacks, major, major damage through these acts with uh, little risk of being detected. I mean, it is concerning, and it's been on our radar for a while. Almost a year ago, Homeland Security specifically warned that domestic extremists have been developing specific plans to attack electricity infrastructure since at least 2020. Do you think this is part of that plan, or is it unrelated? So it, it certainly seems like it is similar to what DHS had warned against. Uh, this is not the first time that it's, uh, you know, these attacks have been ongoing uh, since the early 2000s. Uh, and so uh, the fact that our critical infrastructure is vulnerable, that it sits out in unoccupied spaces there, surrounded by chain link fences, it, it poses a very easy target uh, for somebody that wants to disrupt society. Bottom line, what needs to be done? And, and is it handled by individual power companies, by state governments, by federal law enforcement? Who needs to, to do something here? So what happens when uh, you are seeing attacks on uh, what amounts to private companies, uh, the Tacoma uh, and Puget Sound uh, power companies, these are, are private companies. However, they work in concert with the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation and with Department of Homeland Security to try to, to uh, share information about possible threats to them. Um, uh, this is something that, uh, that really will require an investigation uh, to see whether or not this is a concerted effort or the acts of individuals who are just vandalizing these stations. In, I in think about, it's and I'm sorry, in just about similar. 10 seconds, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are we at the point where we should be looking at uh, manning these sites? Well, that certainly would be one possibility. The, the thing is, is that you would have, you know, uh, years between attacks on these types of stations. And so is it a good expenditure of manpower? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.